Here in North Devon's Biosphere Reserve, hedges are a really important part of the landscape, important for wildlife, and have great cultural connections. They're all Devon hedges, and that means that they are shrubby material on top, usually, with an earth bank at the bottom, which may be faced with stone or may be faced with turf. And today we're going to do some training, learning how to repair stone-faced hedges. So this is similar to dry stone walling in some respects, but different in others. So the first thing you need to do, expose the stones so that you can see what needs to be repaired and what doesn't. So I'm just clearing the soil away from the bottom of the hedge where it's um, all got a bit overgrown and then I can see where the stones are and how much of this gap that we need to uh, repair. I'm going to make sure I keep all the soil together because I've got to put that back in. I'm taking the stones out that are loose on this gap but rather than just putting them flat on the ground I'm preparing lines of courses ready to go back onto the, the, the hedge um, which although it takes a bit of extra time now will save a lot of time later because you can see exactly what size stones you've got. So I'm choosing the best faces to look at me. Dry stone walling is all about keeping the centre of the wall dry, whereas in Devon it's more important to keep the water flowing into the hedge because it's a living barrier. So why are dry stone walls and stone-faced hedges different? Well, obviously on a stone-faced hedge, you've got soil in the middle of the hedge rather than the stones that you'd have in the middle of a dry stone wall. Secondly, it would be acceptable in Devon to put your stones on edge, whereas most of the country in dry stone walling, most stones are put on the flat. Thirdly, you finish off a stone-faced hedge with turf rather than with coping stones. Fourthly, there are no through stones, although you still do follow the principle that you should put the length of the stone into the hedge. And finally, of course, often you'll have shrubs growing on top, which you'd never have on a dry stone wall. So I've taken out all the loose stones and I've arranged them in front of me so I can see what, what I've got to repair, repair with. I've put my first stone on, I'm going to be building in courses. On this side I'm laying on the flat, but my colleague on the other side is laying stones upright. Um, and it's terribly important to follow the local style. This stone's been, um, have been put in on the flat, so that's the way they're going. So this typical stone has faces which could be facing outwards, could be this one, could be that one, could be that one. Um, but to lay it on the flat, it wants, to, it wants to fit in so that it matches the height of the one beside it. So it's got the best face on the outside. Where possible, if there's a lot of length in the stone, such as that one, you might want to put it with the length of the stone going backwards into the hedge. Um, it's important to have these two at the same height because then the next course, as in brick laying, you put one brick on top of two, two bricks on top of one, exactly the same with this sort of stone facing, and the same in dry stone walling. We want one, one stone to cover the joint underneath. Once you've finished your course, then is the time to start backfilling with soil and it's important to make sure this backfilling is nice and solid and well tamped down because this is where this, the water is going to end up. Next time it rains, it's all going to end up in the middle of the hedge. So any sort of stick to poke it in, you might use the end of a sure it's well packed in. And then nothing will move. It's terribly important when you put your stone on to make sure that you're matching the existing wall. 
so I can see a line going through from the existing wall. My new stones match with that perfectly. So whether it's a stone-faced hedge or a turf-faced hedge will depend upon the availability of stone. And some areas have lots of stone and some have very little. But whenever you're repairing a stone-faced hedge, it's really important to follow the local technique because different stones will want different techniques. So I've done six courses with stones on the flat, and these are more triangular shaped stones that were going to work much better flat. But the remaining stones that I've got left, um, I've put them out so that I've got all the chosen faces towards me, and these are definitely going to work much better up on edge. You'll see that I've got some long stones arranged. Now these can be used as tie stones, so they're similar to a through stone, and they take um, weight back into the hedge and we'll, we'll stop the possible bulging or possible falling out of stones. So they're quite important to use and they can work very effectively high up. So having cleared enough space to fit a longer stone in, that's going to sit nice and firmly there. Coming back in at the right angle and that'll offer some nice extra structural strength to the hedge. So a stone-faced hedge should have, just like a dry stone wall, should have a certain amount of batter on it. Now the batter is the amount that the hedge comes in at the top from the bottom. So on perhaps a six foot hedge, you would expect it to come in perhaps a foot on each side. So it would be two foot narrower at the top than it is at the bottom. But as well as that, because there's, when it rains, there's great pressure on the middle of the hedge, wanting to push the stones out in the middle of them, the best hedges are always done with a concave shape to them. So they come in more to begin with and less last of all. And a Devon shovel is a very good way of measuring this. Because it's got a slightly curved handle, you can measure the shape of your hedge with it. Some people, as a rule of thumb, would say it should be like your thumb. It should, it'll come in, come in more to begin with and less last of all. That generally stops the rain pushing those middle stones out. So if you can build them that way, they will be stronger. So to finish the hedge off, I've brought the final course up to level and I've taken the soil just above that final level, so there's a bit of an extra bit of soil above it. And then I'm going to finish it with a few turfs that I've cut off. And these should sit nicely over the top of the stones. And the extra weight there will stop those top stones coming off. And there we are, a little bit of hard work, plenty of sunshine. Didn't take too long, but a nicely finished Devon stone-faced hedge.